as it said with svtperformance.com i'm up here in the detroit area we're in livernoy motorsports you can see we're sort of in the machine shop area where they hog out cylinder heads all that you can see some of the torque plates and everything over here i got andy with me and he's going to explain some Gen 4 Coyote stuff that they've got laying around just everywhere blasted out because they're they're pretty heavily on doing Gen 4 Coyote stuff, especially for F-150, and that's what this part here is for. So yeah. it's an oil pump. <laughs> no, and, it's pretty wild. And it's belt driven on Gen 4 Coyote on F-150. And we're going to try and point out some differences between Gen 4 Coyote F-150 versus Gen 4 Coyote Mustang. And there's numerous. There's numerous. a fair bit. Yeah, it's not, so, uh, you know, for a little while there, F-150 and five liter, you know, Mustang were sort of lined up. They started to make some changes like camshafts, you know, speed density versus mass air. Sort of went old school on us, right? Mustang, mass air, F-150 speed density. And that's still true, but there's a lot of differences now. Yeah. I mean, beyond the firing order and the basics that we sort of gotten used to, the oiling system is different. You got displacement on demand, or excuse me, Ford's version of it is called VDE, right? Variable displacement engine. Um, so it actually shuts down cylinders, you know, to save fuel and a bunch of other stuff. And to accommodate that, they changed a lot. I mean, the cylinder heads are completely different on F-150 now, um, you know, and there's a lot of other stuff. And we'll see those when we go over to the yeah. cylinder head side of things. But, you know, last time you were here, we were just doing some bolt-ons, right? Yeah. You know, we we're talking intake manifold adapters to put a regular Coyote. And that all stems from all this being different on, on F-150. Yeah. Um, and it's taken off. I mean, we're building short blocks all the time now for these. We're finding new and interesting ways to upgrade certain stuff you know on the oiling systems as well so you know we'll see a little bit of that as we go through and, and do that but you know there's a lot of differences you know very few interchangeable parts that are truly interchangeable now between mustang and f-150 so one of the i, I guess in especially in f-150 it's all really oil based is the everything that makes the gen 4 the gen 4 in the truck because it's, it goes through the displacement on demand, or what did you call it? What's Ford call it? VD, VD variable yeah. displacement engine, I believe there is what we go. it stands for. So we've got this big, it's, this is a variable vein uh, oil pump that can vary oil pressure, and that's the reduced drag, things like that. And it's sending oil, you'll see it in the block later, uh, through some galleys, goes to this big, yeah transfer yeah. pipe that goes and attaches like it's crazy how all this stuff works in the cylinder head then you have solenoids that sit on top of the cam caps I mean, or that are the cam caps really they are here. yeah yeah and you'll see another interesting feature when we get over there um one thing that i actually think is very useful the heads themselves are just the heads and there's actually a bottom carrier now for the cams so if you end up toasting the cams the heads aren't junk, yeah. just the carriers are. So it's actually, you know, that's a, a good thing in our opinion. Yeah, especially, you know, for racing, motorsports, things like that, where, you know, if guys have $3,000 into a set of cylinder heads and then, like you said, spin, you know, a cam because yeah. low oil pressure or something I, like that. I think that. everybody from Mod to Coyote has run into that. Mm -hmm. They finally get a sweet set of heads. They have some oiling failure and guess what? It's time two, yeah. times three. You know, so this this does sort of save a little bit there. Um, got a couple of Gen 4 Coyotes. Again, these are F-150 specific ones that we're building. Um, obviously, since Mustang's not out there yet for a need for that, but you know, these are going together. Got our upgraded rods, pistons, bearings. You know, everything that goes along with it. Um, we also went a step further, sort of taking advantage of you know the fact that this is a belt-driven pump, and we wanted to upgrade you know, every bit of the oiling that we could. And that's actually our billet drive sprocket for, you know, the, the cog belt, the Gilmer belt, you know, however you want to, you know, refer to it as. Because um, the factory one, guess what? Mm -hmm. Powdered metal, right? Yeah. And um, this is pressed on to the crank, so. It is, it is an actual press fit. Um, so it's not like it just slides on and off mm -hmm. and all that. So it's pressed on. Um, and, you know, we wanted to have something more durable. Yeah. Now, this is one of the things we were talking about out there is 
uh, you've got these added oil galleys. So on a Gen 3 Coyote block, this does not exist. This this galley coming up on each side, yep. feeding up from, I'm mean, it coming up from the mains, I guess. Yeah. Coming up, going into the heads to control all of uh, that cylinder deactivation stuff. But also, it's just adding more oil to the entire cam system. So uh, Gen 4 Coyote Mustang, is just going to have better oiling basically yeah from from everything we see the blocks are identical um same casting numbers at least when the stuff that we can look up you know sort of shows so you're going to have this feature commonized between um the f-150 and the actual mustang yeah and this you can see the closed deck design here all the cooling passages this looks very much like predator block basically because yeah. uh, you know gen 3 coyote had a lot more open space uh in the deck this block looks very stout and like see you steam holes drilled here as well yeah you're starting to see more and more of the you know the high power stuff translate over you know into the the you know, normal production or the, the commoner, right, yeah. parts, right? So. Well, that's how it always seems to do is it just trickles down it does. from the higher performance. The old SVT stuff goes into the new GT stuff. And this is one of the other things you were pointing out is we have holes drilled through uh, main webbing here, basically, just to reduce windage from cylinder to cylinder. Yeah, you've got a lot better cross-block ventilation in it, so it's, it's definitely going to help out there as well. Um, you know, there's definitely a lot of, you know, cool stuff that made it into these, but okay. like always, there's room for improvement, and, you know, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. And even the metallurgy, like this, uh, the aluminum looks a little different than a Gen 3 uh, as far as the grain pattern. Almost. Yeah, so you can tell they, there's some changes in how they do the actual casting, you know, at the foundry and all that, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's not, not a miracle material yet, right? They haven't yeah. quite stepped it up that far but it's, yeah. it's definitely a step in the right direction making everything better and one of the things that andy mentioned to me is their billet main caps uh will still work in this so this is obviously not livernois billet main caps but it will work with this block yeah absolutely so but if you wanted to upgrade there and you can see this one's got all the pistons and everything laid out going to go with manly h-beam rods another crank over here Yep. Another crank down here. Yeah, so. there's there's no shortage of it, that's yeah. for sure. And then getting over into the cylinder head department yeah. here. Yeah, we'll check it out and show you what we got going on. Sort of, we'll detour before we go in there. Um, still on the front of Gen 4. This is actually our prototype CNC program. We're still revising a couple of things, but we got the, the box of a goodies yeah. here to look at like with the rocker arms how they've changed for the yeah. followers you know for that this uh cylinder deactivation but this is that that removal carrier you know now that is the cylinder head so yeah. you see you know you no see. provision for the cams themselves but you see all the oiling passages yeah. so if you're familiar with like six liter power stroke that had the oil rail basically oil galley this is all cast in this is just oil passages coming up through and then going into this whole cam carrier plate yeah and that just you know like i said it's serviceable you can actually yeah. replace it you know so um not quite the fears when you have trauma you know like coyotes of old do yeah and you can see how the rockers or roller finger followers whatever you want to call it and the lash adjusters that is way different than what we're used to seeing on every modular before this yeah yeah yep. and that's just to get you a tenth better fuel mileage on an f-150 <laughs> yeah. really it all adds up right yeah you know but, but you can see they're working on their program here reporting out the heads and that's i mean that looks fantastic already but that's the cool thing is like you said if you're really pushing one of these and you do end up galling a camshaft in this you know, th there's no replaceable bearings and that's just modulars for you. You don't trash an entire head, so that's yeah, pretty nice. Definitely a good thing and, you know, with how hard these guys are pushing these, right? We got several in the nines now. Um, that's never enough, right? No. That's, that's what this whole industry is about, so there's, we're going to see people push it further and further. Well, there's no such thing as too much power, just not enough traction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But yeah, these things are just wild looking. Yeah. So even 
what would be the normal one is different than what we're used to seeing yep. versus the one with all the springs and everything on it. Yeah, yeah. pretty crazy stuff. We'll pop in here real quick sure. and uh, show you some other cylinder head stuff that we got going on beyond just Gen 4. And I think before we get in too far checking out this stuff, because there's some Godzilla stuff down there we need to look at, not only just Cody, but uh, I think this would be a good spot to just clip this one off. We'll pick it up next time. No problem. Sounds good.